If you process lots of data and the network connectivity is available, Databox Gateway and Databox Edge are online data transfer solutions that simplify the process of moving your data to Azure. In addition, Databox Edge enables you to pre-process your data locally. Andrew Mason is here to show us how it all works today on Azure Friday. Hey everyone, Donovan Brown here with another episode of Azure Friday. So on a previous episode, we talked about data boxes. So what are you yes. going to tell me that's a little bit different? So uh, that episode was with Matthew Dixon, mm -hmm. and he talked about the whole family of devices. Okay. Today I'm going to focus on the online transfer devices. So there's a Databox Gateway and a Databox Edge. All right, perfect. So yep. tell me the difference between the two of these. So Databox Gateway is a virtual appliance. Basically it provides a storage gateway functionality, so you can deploy that on Hyper-V or VMware. Okay. And then it exposes shares, either SMB or NFS on your network, you copy data into that and it handles the transfer to the cloud for you. All right, got you it. You can also set bandwidth throttling on there so you can limit the amount of bandwidth it consumes during, say, normal business hours. Okay. And then the other one? So Databox Edge provides all that gateway functionality but has the ability to do compute on top of it. So you can pre-process data before it gets transferred. Ah, I see. To so make sure it's in the format or the... The format you need it or if you want to subset or modify the data in some way, like for GDPR reasons, your lawyers won't let you put certain things sure. in the cloud. You could do that modification, set up a data pipeline for it. All right, interesting. Or, or even do like ML processing where you want a result close to where that data is being generated. You don't okay. want to wait for the round trip to the cloud. You can get that result close while still pushing your full data up to the cloud and getting uh, retraining your models cool. or doing further analytics. Can you show it. me how it works? Sure. So right here I've got a connection to a Databox Edge uh, device and you can see I've got a, a share set up on here and also the ability to add Edge Compute modules. And so we use the IoT Edge, the module management framework from there to allow you to push containers down to the device in a secure way as well as update them. And it looks like I'm in the Azure portal here. When I looked Azure at the portal. other device, only the ordering went through the portal Correct. and then I connected it to my physical network. Mm -hmm. But this looks like I'm actually able to manage this mm -hmm. from the portal. Yes, this is an online transfer device. You can run disconnected for a period, but you do have to be connected to do the initial activation and provision shares and set permissions. And I see, I see, okay. It, it does have a similar local UI where you can do some basic monitoring. You know, if you can't get connected to the, the cloud in some way, you can do some diagnostics tests on the device. So okay. You can figure out what's wrong with it, as well as generate like a support package. So if there are issues, we can help troubleshoot that and get you reconnected. Got it. Okay, perfect. But yes, for the, for the most part, other than initial network config and a few other things, you do everything through the portal. Great. Now, once I have that share created, mm -hmm. I just see it in Windows Explorer as a you user? just see it in Windows Explorer as a user. So okay. I'm just going to create another uh, quick share here to show you how this works. And so, you know, you can pick SMB or NFS, and then you set your storage account. So this is where in Azure I want the data that I copy to that share to reside? Yes. Okay, and then you can it. pick block, blob, page blob, or Azure okay, files. Okay, the type of storage the I want to use. The type of storage you want to use. Okay. And then you can either, uh, you can create a new one or use an existing one. I don't have one of these created yet. Okay. And then you can also select, you know, if you've already created some accounts, you can select, you know, my demo user is going to have access to this share. Okay. And it will go off and provision that on the device. Got it. Now, because of the interaction between Azure, it will take a minute or so. So I've already created a share on this particular device. Okay. I'm going to connect with that same user account. Uh, so now Drive W is connected. If I take a look at W, you know, it is empty. Okay. I've got a few files in my demo share here, and I will go ahead and uh, switch over there. Again, it's empty other than a few sure. uh, config files. I got provisioned into it, and then I'm just going to copy these files over. All right, so I'm just copying, like I said, like yeah, I normally would. Doing right? a, this is a just local network copy to a local share on my network, and okay. then if I go over here and refresh in uh, Storage Explorer, so connect up to Demo Share, you can see it's already started copying the data up up there for me. Got it. And then if I go back and take a look at the at the portal here, you see I have Edge Compute modules here. Oh, and see my other share yep, just popped up. up. So I can go in here and I can go under modules. And I haven't deployed any on this particular device. And how do I write these modules? So they're just containers. So you can either use IoT Edge, Azure Functions, Azure Stream Analytics, or Azure ML, okay. or you can write any container that you push through the IoT module management system. I see. Okay. And so you can see I've got this connected up to IoT Hub and it's Databox Edge, Demo Device Dash Edge. And then I can go over into you know, my IoT hub, 
and I can see my device there and I can set up my twinning and I can add modules and things to the device. Gotcha. So I can set up to pre-process pre for me. And then one more question. So the pre-processing happens. So the data gets onto the device, mm -hmm. but it needs to be pre-processed before yes. it starts moving. Yes. So how do I tell it that, hey, I need you to pre-process before you move yes. it versus just taking it and moving it? So when, it. You, when you set up your share for pre-processing, you indicate that that's for pre-processing gotcha. and it won't get touched until that processing happens. Basically, your, your code has to indicate to the system that it's ready to move. I see. Yes. I got you. So I write my module. It does whatever it's supposed to do. And then it sends a signal saying, OK, this data is now right, safe and ready for exactly. you to process. Yes. And then it'll end up just in a share like we did a moment ago. Exactly. Very yeah. cool. And then I, I have a virtual appliance here. And you notice how it's just showing me shares. I don't have the ability to do compute on there gotcha. because it is virtual. That's, that's the storage gateway only. Right, so this is the one that runs inside of Hyper-V or runs inside of VMware, VMware yes. but I still configure it from the Azure portal yes. proper, yep. right? So yep. there's software that yep. I, it's a VM basically that I run yeah. that you is would, provided by you. You would provision a VM and then once that VM started up, basically the process the same as the physical device. Gotcha, very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing You're this welcome. with us. Yeah. So we are learning all about data boxes here on Azure Friday.